Good day, senior high school learners. Welcome to the 21st century literature. We are in world literature in the second quarter and we will be discussing about East Asian literature. We can see here the map of East Asia and the countries around this one. We will tackle about their literature. What are the countries inside East Asia? So we have Mongolia. Mongolia is known as the land of eternal blue sky or counter blue sky because it has over 250 sunny days a year. So you can see here the map of Mongolia. Next we have China. China has the largest population in the world. China has a population of 1.4 billion. Next, we have South Korea. Since the 21st century, South Korea has been renowned for its globally influential pop culture, particularly in music known as K-pop and TV dramas, K-dramas and cinema, a phenomenon referred to as the Korean wave. North Korea. North Korea or the Democratic People's Republic of Korea is a highly centralized totalitarian state despite being one of the poorest countries in the world. It maintains one of the largest militaries and devotes significant resources to its illicit nuclear weapons and ballistic missile programs. Next, Taiwan. Taiwan, the economy of Taiwan is highly developed market economy. It is the 8th largest in Asia and 18th largest in the world by purchasing party allowing Taiwan to be included in the advanced economies group by the International Monetary Fund. Japan. Japan is famous for the sites like Cherry Blossoms and Mount Fuji. Cutting edge technology like Japanese cars and bullet trains, wacky inventions like karaoke and vending machines, cultural values like politeness and punctuality, popular anime and manga, and the mouth watering food like ramen and sushi. Now, let's go to the history of East Asian literature, East Asian literature exchanges and cultural networks. At the turn of the 21st century world, witnessed the sudden rise of China, while Japan having recovered from the decades following its defeat in the World War II, continued to be a superpower at present. China and Japan are the two of the most powerful countries in Asia. China and Japan's power and influence are not only economic but cultural as well. Both countries had produced novel laureates such as Ken Zaburo O and Yasunari Kawabata for Japan and Gao Xinxian and Mo Yan for China. These two countries are equally distinguished for their contribution to the world literature. Both of these countries continue to shape Philippine history up to the present. Historically, Japan occupied the Philippines from 1942 to 1945, while China was a great ally of the Philippines left especially during the height of the martial law era in the 1970s. They have also had great influence on the current cultural landscape of the Philippine society. China's Maoist revolution pushed a lot of Chinese to flee away from their motherland and seek refuge in various countries, including the Philippines. At present, the Philippines has a strong Chinese diaspora that has been influential in various avenues of Philippine social and cultural life. In recent decades, Japan has been popularly seen as a place where Filipinos went to earn money by 
working as entertainer in bars. However, at present, Japan's connection to the Philippines has produced professors speaking in Filipino and studying Philippine history. Another development in the Philippines is the rise of the South Korean population. Many of these are students studying in English in different schools across the country while others are in the country for business interests. What makes literature literary? Literary authors have distinct polished prose that Authorial voice is what sets literary fiction apart from genre fiction. The prose elevates the novels into something approaching art, even when a literary novel has a genre plot. But the most important element here is that literary fiction has unique style. So let's go to the stories um, written by Caroline Howe. Characters are father, Caroline S. Howe, and family in China. Settings, the story happened. In the Philippines and the other setting was in Hong Kong where his family and other one was in Tang Mountains where he experienced the hungry years. Climax. Two women meet on the island where they shared a childhood. One is looking for a mother and other for her yaya. One is overseas worker and the other is an heiress. In an old bay na bato, hunted by scandal and tragedy, secrets and ghosts, the women find their lives entangled and face the challenge of refusing their predetermined fates and embracing their own open futures. Plot. So almost all of the writings of Caroline Howe are focused on the ideals, developments, and further question about the nationalist spirits of people. So her writings depict about the political situation of the societal conditions among scandals associated with the lives of people. Ending, the story ended as his father told them to bring back them to China to show how their past memories happened. Carlin C. Howe is basically a Chinese author who had been writing in many works depicting the Filipino culture. So almost all of the writings of Carlin Howe are focused on the ideals developments and further questioned about nationalist spirits of people to the major extent that the subject depicts racial nationalism. Her writings is more about political situation, societal conditions,